All right, everybody, welcome back to a new edition of Survival Stories. Ladies and gentlemen, today I am so very excited that you joined me. I'm so very happy because today we are going to get a technical build finally installed in our biolab. Now, the support from you guys for being in the biolab and for doing the biolab has been absolutely, absolutely over the skies. It's been absolutely amazing. Uh, and for that, I'm so ever grateful. Uh, and so I think, you know, we stay here for a while. I'm very much enjoying it. Let me count one, two, three, four. Uh, I'm very much enjoying it. I'm having my uh, the time of my life uh, <laughs> with, with this biolab at the moment. Uh, and so we stay here and we continue to do a little bit of work. Uh, I want to get a mob spawner. Our first very test chamber. Oh, crap. Our first very test chamber I want to get up today. Sounds like a plan? So last episode we worked out the tunnels over here. Uh, I haven't really changed these at all. I've, I've left the masses. Uh, I have some other ideas for what we could put in the walls, but we'll talk about that some other time. Um, we worked out this intersection and we said that over here and over here we should have two test chambers. Um, so, I saw some comments on the last video and one comment in specific that I got really excited when I read was that I should take a look at the portal game. The game portal. <laughs> the game portal. I should take a look at that and I should get some inspiration for how to build some of these test chambers. And remember we said, oh jeez, we need to get we need to go up and deal with that. Let's grab a sponge. Um, and remember we said in the last episode that no test chambers can really be the same. Oh, did I really get poisoned? Mm-hmm. No test chambers can really be the same because it will just make it really tough on us. Uh, stupid, stupid sewer thing. What is this anyway? Can I see it? Sewage. Yes, it's sewage. Okay, what are you doing here, sewage? This is my bio lab. Shouldn't have any of you hanging about. Please. There. Uh, where were I? Yeah, we said that we... I, I didn't want uh, the test chambers to necessarily look the same. Um... And so, a suggestion was that I should take a look at the portal gun and take a look at how the test chambers are made there. And I did. And oh man, did I get some inspiration. Mm-hmm. I did. So my plan for the layout of this very first test chamber, which will probably be a main mob spawner, because we need one of those. You know, one of those where we can select which mob we want to spawn and we can turn it on and off and do as uh, some cool things with it but not necessarily a lot of cool things like the main purpose is to spawn mobs that will be in here uh, and what i'm thinking then what i saw in portal is that we should have a walkway going around this center room so this block here let me put a sponge there that would be our center can i clear out some space please uh, that there would be our center and would have a walkway that goes around and we're gonna measure at one two three So it will be a nine by nine in the middle is what I'm thinking uh -huh. Oh jeez, <laughs> I need I need a tool belt, but the tool belt in TIC isn't working all too well uh, So it will be a nine by nine. So that's four on that side four there. We have to do another section here and then it will go down and then around this will make Let's see. Let's get a little bit of this done. I'll do I'll do most of the building off camera because I really want to spend time on the technical aspects of today. Uh, I, while I clear this out, I got something that I have to just let off my chest, uh, and this may be a weird, uh, weird thing to say now, but uh, today, at the time of the recording of this episode, I received my first internet, my first own internet troll, my first own internet hater. The first time ever for me that someone's actually commenting on a video and expressing that they're hating me. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not sad about it. Don't get me wrong. Don't don't pity me or anything. I know that's part of the whole YouTubing thing. But it struck me. It was so it's so weird that someone would use the word hate in the way that this person did. And so I go and look up this guy, uh, this guy's Google Plus profile because it wasn't like anonymous you know he, he simply commented on a video and i was thinking oh it's probably a kid you know it's probably a 10 year old having a bad day or something nope turns out he's like me 30 years old uh, and uh he seems to be a very angry person in general and i just felt sad for him i was like 
why spend time on this? And I've read about people, there's actually a lot of debates going on in Sweden about... Oh, <laughs> that scared me. About people uh, getting getting hate on the internet, like celebrities and that get gets hate on the internet all the time. Um, and I just, you know, I've never experienced it. I know about the whole problem and the whole trolling uh, community that we live in, you know, the back alleys of, of internet where people are just, you know, I don't know what's wrong with them, but they, they just decide that they... They go hate people. Uh, but it was a new experience for me, and, and I thought I'd share that. I'm not sad or anything, not at all. I, I thought it was kind of interesting uh, interesting to see what this person was all about. I did reply to the hate, you know, I replied with a lot of love. Uh, and uh, I think that's probably the best medicine. Because if you go and you're really upset about something stupid, like this guy, he was upset about my voice. He thought it was super annoying. He hated it. He said he hates me because I have an annoying voice. Uh, and, you know, it, obviously he doesn't have to watch the videos or anything, and he can have his own opinion, but it was the whole hate thing. Um, but yeah, a anyway, I just want to share that, but again, don't pity or anything, that's not why I brought it up, it's just that I, um, new experience, very interesting. Anyway, so now, you can kind of, it, it starts to make sense, what I'm trying to show you guys here. Um, it's gonna be, let's see, let's just clear out the last of this, otherwise I'll, my OCD will start kicking in. Let's do that. So we'll come down here, right? And we'll have this thing in the middle. And this here will be windows. And probably I'll bring the windows all the way down. Let's just try that a little bit quickly together. Probably would have windows going all the way down like so. Um, and then this here would be where we spawn the mobs. But we'll go down like this. Maybe four, maybe even more. Maybe four, maybe even more. I rhyme. That's what I do. Uh, so we'll do that, and I think that will look absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, everybody, now it's time to get a little bit technical. You ready for this? The way we're gonna do the mob spawning, the way I'm thinking anyway, we'll see what we end up with. We'll use an auto spawner from MFR. Uh, and then we'll have a computer screen. Did I have any screens, perhaps? Monitor? Nope. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's use gold blocks. Why not? Let's use gold blocks for now, just to illustrate. We'll have a computer screen sitting over here on this wall. Uh, and I want to be able to either through my text chat thingamajingy that we installed the Peripheral Plus Plus, or through a touchscreen monitor here, control which mob spawns in here. Okay, so ideally, I could walk up here and I could say, okay, it's time for us to spawn in some blazes. Push a button, and then blazes starts to spawn here. Uh, they fall down and they get killed somehow. Remember, this is the first test chamber, and we're simply killing mobs here for the uh, for their loot. Okay, that's pretty much what this chamber is going to be about. We're going to have other chambers for other things, don't you worry. Um, but... In order to do that, we would need to connect up a computer screen to this. This guy also requires mob essence and power, mind you. And we need to be able to control which spawn egg goes in here. Uh -huh. So we have a little bit of a, a, a situation to solve. And I've been thinking about this quite a bit. And I'll give you a little bit of peace of my mind, okay? Now prepare. It's going to be technical talk. Iskal do technical talk. Uh, first things first. We need to know where this auto spawner will place the mobs. And if we take a look with the precision French hammer uh, from MFR, you can see that the blue box indicates all the different positions where mobs will spawn. And I'm actually gonna help you out here to, to visualize this, because this ain't super simple. Um, so all the blue boxes here, for example, this block, oops, this block over here is a spawning block. Uh, it's able to spawn there, and I think, I believe, it's three tall, so it's going to spawn there, there, and then one below. Is that right? Yes. And the blue indicates the feet position of the mob. So, for example, a wither skeleton would spawn here, and would end up, again, using blo gold blocks, would end up starting to fall down there. Okay, so the feet in the blue, and then uh, torso and head. The beautiful head that we that we so desperately require in the grey skies at the moment. But he would spawn there and he would fall down. Okay? Uh, now, what happens if there is a block there? 
you may ask. Well, Minecraft will say, we're going to spawn a wither skeleton right here. And then, since there block is a block there, it will say, nope, that didn't work out. And then it will recalculate. So this entire idle thing will recalculate and try and spawn another mob somewhere else. Which means that we are losing out on mob spawns if we block if we block these blocks. Now, obviously, we're going to require to block some kind of blocks. Um, maybe not, actually. I just got an idea. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how this works out. Ideally, we'd have no single block. Okay? We'd have no single block. It would just be this. But as I said, we're going to require to do quite a few things here. The first thing I'm, I want, I'm going to want to do here is actually get rid of all the interiors of that. So let's spawn in... Wow, I have a lot of mobs, don't I? Let's spawn in some villagers. Why not? Put that in there and we can do... Actually, we can do yes. Well, no, it will take time. So what happens now is that it first counts down the idol and then it goes to work and work. And if there had been a, a block, I think this guy spawned like... Yeah, he probably spawned on this gold block right here. Had there been a block there, it would simply have skipped it. It wouldn't have spawned in over here. It would simply have skipped the spawn. Make sense? Um, so obviously, oh, I see. Random things thing. Come here. I need a better weapon. Oh, we got one of those ectoplasm. Cool. Um, so uh, what I'm getting at is that we, we need to have a clear, a clear area for the mobs to spawn. I'm sorry if I ramble a little bit, but I'm so excited because I've been thinking about this quite a bit. Now, one thing that we could do is run some inventory cables from SFM. These could handle both the essence, the power, and they could push and control this inventory over here. However, they wouldn't be able to tell us what's in the spawner currently. And that may be important for our computer screen. We could use NRIO cables and bunch them up in one block and just the, at the end of the day would just miss this very spot here, which is fine. Um, but again, we couldn't be able to control the inventory here. So for that, we're probably going to use a computer. We're going to need a computer that can read what mob is inside and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if we need it, but uh, that's the way I'm going to try to do this. And I've got a pretty cool idea. We're going to take a look at a block that I haven't played with at all this season. The Transvector Interface from Tomic Tinkerer. A Tomcraft block in the Biolab? Yes, this is when we bring mods together. Uh, the way this guy works is that it can, if I understand it correctly, or if I remember correctly, uh, it can mimic any block, and I think the distance is four blocks away. We're going to try it out. Um, and I've also got a transvector binder. I'm going to... How do I do this? Just right-click, location set, and then right-click on this guy. Shift right-click. The transvector block of origin is too far away. Okay, so we're going to have to move him closer. I believe it's four blocks. So one, two, three four let's try four put him there and location set and then shift right click too far away crappers one more down that's fine we could we could have it there that's fine location set there we go binding complete now what we can do is we should be able to if we pump power into this guy here this guy should probably get or hopefully get power uh, and as you can see, this is energy 200 at the moment, so it's pretty much drained. So I'm going to snag a Tesseract real quick. Put it down there. And no power. Okay. Um, <laughs> epic failure. Here, let's try Let's try this with a, with a cable instead. So a flux duct, maybe. I think we... Uh, I read in the Tomcraft book that it, it can handle TE3 power. Oh, that's not even connecting. I think I know the problem. This guy... Crap. The Transvector interface will not be able to work with the auto spawner. Yep. That's just how it is. Okay. <laughs> I've been thinking about this for so long, but I didn't want to try it without you guys. Uh, then we're going to need to do something else. I'm going to come up with a way of doing... It's fine. It's fine. You know? It's fine. I like the challenge. Uh, let's try and use inventory cables from SFM to get this build going. So one of the things we're going to need if we do this with SFM is a cable that can do both cabling and redstone emitting. So if you remember, we used these a few episodes ago, the advanced cable clusters. So I'm making a, uh, a combined cable camouflage and a redstone emitter. 
And if I remember correctly, this should be able to both... I'm just going to try real quick. This should be able to read... Crappers. This should be able to read the uh, inventory as well as sending a redstone signal. Can check it like so. Yes, that works. Okay. All right, so there's one thing that SFM cannot do for us, no matter how crazy uh, cool of a mod it is, and that is to control this very button here. The uh, spawn exact copy, yes or no. Now that's going to be important. Remember, we're in a lab, everything needs to be precise, uh, <laughs> and uh, we, we cannot leave anything for chance. So... I got a plan for how to fix this. I may actually have to. I may have to sacrifice one of these spawning boxes here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and use a turtle from Computercraft. And I'm going to put that guy down there. And I've already written a little bit of a text program here. Uh, I tried making an advanced turtle, which would basically give me color um, in here. But for some reason, the recipe doesn't seem to be correct. So... We're gonna we're gonna have to do with a with a regular one here. Hold on, need to cough. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Now uh, I've written a little program that will grab the functions available in the uh, auto spawner through Computercraft, and one of the things I'm looking for is set exact copy. But I, I notice that this thing. Oh shoot. Shooters, it doesn't show everything. Uh, I know, in fact, I, I know by default that there is a method. Um, hmm, can I fix this somehow? All right, now, let's see. There we go. Now it just listed the first 10 functions. That's great. Um, so the, the what this is, is basically computer crafts peripheral methods, if you will, with the auto spawner. Okay? Uh, now, this is here. This is here. This here is what we need to uh, to do things with. Number five, get spawn exact, or more importantly, set spawn exact. Now that means that we can, to this peripheral, set a or send a signal from the turtle through a little bit of a program that alters the uh, state of this button. All right, so I've written a little bit of code just to show you guys how we can control this button. Okay, currently the auto spawner is set to spawn exact copy yes. And if we run my test2 program, it will say that it's in yes, and then switch it to no. Okay? And then if I run it again, it will say it's no, and then switch it to yes. Cool. Very cool indeed. The way that works is, uh, real quickly, I'm setting the spawner variable to the peripheral in front of the turtle, which is the spawner. Uh, <clears throat> and then I've written a switch function, which basically... Uh, sets these spawners set spawn exact to not spawner get spawn exact okay so whatever it's not it will set the spawn exact to then i have an if statement which says if the get spawn exact and this is basically uh, if it's true or if it's returning yes then print yes sleep one second and then run the switch function uh, and then print that it switch it to no and if it's not yes then do the opposite so print no sleep one second and switch it uh, remember this function that i wrote up here works both ways so i just need one function very cool now don't you worry i will post this program if i get it to work the way i want to i will post it in a single video uh, probably and go through it thoroughly now we could just leave it like this. We could leave it like this. And we could be happy. We could say, yeah, well, we'll take up this spawn spot and we'll hope, uh, we'll hopefully, <laughs> we'll probably have to take up this spawn spot as well. Because otherwise, uh, mobs will be stuck on the, on the turtle and they won't fall down and die. Uh, we could settle with that or we could try and see if there is a possibility using a little bit of magic from our dear friends in Tinker's Mechwork to make this a little bit better and not take up any spawning spots so let's go with a advanced drawbridge up here and i haven't tested this mind you so this is purely hypothetical and then one two three four five down so we're gonna go let's just put some stone for now i guess one two three four five or was it four in between i think it was four in between and then we do the turtle and I've named the turtle, by the way, very important. Otherwise, this drawbridge won't work with him, or it will just output an empty turtle. Uh, but hopefully this works. 
There we go, and he's in the correct position, so I should be able to run test two. Beautiful. So what we could do, and this is a bit of a long shot when we have this little up here, but what we could do is write a little bit of code. Remember, this is a wireless turtle. You see the modem over there. Um, so we could write a code that sends a signal from the computer to the to a redstone control up here that powers the drawbridge in the control room that I made up here. That powers the drawbridge, uh, flicks it down, waits whatever how long this takes, like for three seconds, uh, and then sends a message to the spawn turtle to run the program to switch this. Yes, something like that, something like that. It, it makes sense in my head. Then we leave the cable here and that will give us uh, controlled power and it will control uh, uh, the fluids and it will uh, control the spawn egg itself. Because remember, or not remember, I haven't said this before, we could use the spawn turtle to send the item directly to the auto spawner, but I think that's going to be annoying. It's going to be better if we use the SFM for that. Okay, we got another little bit of a setback here that I wanted to share with you. Um, power through SFM does not currently work in, in my pack, and that is due to a bug. I spoke with the mod author, Authori, and um, as you can see, I've got a Tesseract sitting there, and what I'm doing is that I'm having a trigger every second, and then I'm having an RF input being my Tesseract, and an RF output being my auto spawner. Um, but, unfortunately, no power here, uh, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and update that in between the episodes. I'm going to work on the other things today uh, that needs to be done here. But I wanted to, to just share that with you. That is a bug if you ran into it yourself. Don't worry, don't worry. Next update of the pack will have that solved. Okay, knowing that SFM cannot transmit power, um, we're going to have to wait with that specific thing, but there are so many things in this build that uh, we have to get going. Um, now, first of all, let's do the following. SFM will be responsible of everything except for the switching to exact copy, yes or no. Uh, so that's what I want to get going first. Now, the way that I'm going to do this, I've run a redstone conduit from the computer that I placed down here. This is going to be our control computer and you'll, you can see I've already installed a uh, touchscreen API called Touchpoint. I'll put the uh, the uh, the whole program once it's done. I'll, I'll be sure to let you know. It won't be in this episode, but you know, stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up it, hook it, hook it up, hook up it, hook it up so that we can control the power of this thing with a touch of a, a computer, because that seems like a pretty easy task I should be able to manage. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the way we're going to do that, I'm pulling a redstone cable from the computer all the way over here, and then I'm going to connect this bad boy up to our SFM network, and let's see, what side is this? East. So shift click, and east, and strong signal, sure. Boom. And that's a redstone receiver. Let's just make sure, because I did have a play with the colors. No, that's fine. Um, oops, and then we'll write a little bit of code to tell it that once it receives a redstone signal, um, actually we could do, where's my, where's my inventory manager? Oh, it's in my inventory. <laughs> Haven't even started writing anything yet. Let's put you down there maybe. So, uh, let's create a little bit of an SFM code here. And there we go. Just a simple trigger to check this every second check a redstone condition and what they're checking is the redstone receiver over there if it's receiving a signal if that's true then go ahead and emit a redstone signal of 15 strength doesn't matter as long as it's over zero uh, to the emitter and remember that's the cable camouflage down there uh, while if it's false go ahead and emit a signal of zero all right uh, so, basically, I've also hooked it up to the power button here. Uh, so this power button in, in computer craft, and again, I will, po <laughs> I will post the program once it's done. The power button, the only thing it does is toggles the uh, redstone cable on the back of the computer. So now it is on. We can see that by the aid idle. And if we press power, boom, it's off. Press power again, and it's on. 
beautiful so we are actually able to do things with sfm and computer craft together now that's fantastic uh, the next thing that i want to get to is you'll notice that i put a computer up here and the idea is that we're going to put all of the safari nets that we have in this copper chest uh, we may actually have to change it for a diamond chest i'm not sure but the safari nets will go in an inventory next to the computer uh, now this computer will be our mob host you can see i've named it uh, and i'm using a shouldn't say disk drive it should say a wireless <laughs> wireless modem it's a wireless modem um, and then what i'm gonna do is have a control on this screen that sends a signal over something called rednet which is this uh, wireless thing receives it over here and based on what i press basically based on on the button it will select a safari net in the chest and it will send it to this gold chest now from the gold chest sfm will handle the rest so sfm will simply have a uh, uh, maybe maybe also we do another redstone control based off of the mob hole so once it's got the signal it's going to sleep for a second and then send a redstone signal to sfm who will then react and pick up the ball or the thing we moved in this chest put it in the spawner and that should be very cool all right now to explain or to show you how this rednet works think of rednet as the interweb we can send messages and we can receive messages like a pm chat like a messenger or skype okay uh, that's basically rednet you hook up the computers to rednet and they're they're connected to the interwebs okay uh, now I've written a little bit of change here to the spawner computer this guy over here uh, basically what I've done is that if the p at which is the button this doesn't make sense to you at the moment but once you get the full program it will make sense uh, if the button is rednet then do a rednet send 45 hello world so send a message that's hello world to 45 and 45 is the ID of the host computer. So let's try this out. We're going to start up the program and that cha should change the button to rednet. Very good. And then we're going to come upstairs and go into this guy here and let's terminate it. The way you see the IDs of the computer is by uh, typing ID and it says this computer is ID 45. So that's how I know. Uh, on this side here, I have a little bit of a code. Uh, this line here first of all I open rednet top which is basically the modem and then I say local sender ID message and protocol equals to rednet receive now what this does is that it sits there and it waits it just you know hangs out on Skype waiting for someone to send it a message okay uh, and then I've done a little bit of a string here once there is a message coming through it will print that I get a message from and then the sender ID and the message in theory i haven't tried it we'll try it out so we'll do that and then we'll come downstairs and remember we have a lot of stuff here uh we have we have open peripheral plus plus so we could improve on this system it's just a little bit of a testing at the moment uh and there we go message from 44 hello world now what's beautiful here is that we can take the hello world or we can do whatever and we can basically send it commands to this computer and then we can create operations based on those commands. I know it sounds a little bit complicated but trust me it's pretty straightforward. Uh, <laughs> But however, I think that uh, that is unfortunately going to have to do it for today. We ain't going to finish this today. Uh, it's been a lot of technical stuff. It seems like if I leave any of this stuff out, uh, some people get really upset. So I hope that you have enjoyed. I will continue to write code, 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 code in between episodes. We'll come back next time. We'll see if we can maybe not finish this whole thing here, but at least get it to a point where it can spawn in mobs. That would be super super cool um yes so anyway thank you so much for watching i truly hope that you have enjoyed it even though it's been super technical uh, do leave me some feedback and comments down below as always and don't forget to hit the like button and i see you in the next episode